Okay, this is question three of the 2015 uh, electricity exam, NCA level three. So question three, there are a number of techniques used to detect cars and bicycles waiting at traffic lights. Uh, the most common technique is to use an inductive loop. Question A, state how an inductor stores energy. So inductors, they store energy as magnetic fields. So inductors store energy as magnetic fields. Um, capacitors, if you have two parallel plate capacitors, they store their energy inside the electric field. So we have one type of inductor loop is shown in the circuit below. Uh, the circuit contains a 9 volt battery with an inductor of 1.2 Zero, 0 times 10 to the negative 2, so that's 1 macro henry or 1 milli henry. Um, and the total resistance uh, of 12.5 ohms in the circuit. So as we can see, it's a DC circuit, so we don't have any reactants to worry about whatsoever because inductors just act like wires after a substantial period of time um, inside the circuit. But as we can see, the switch hasn't been closed yet, so Soon after closing the switch, the current is 0 0.26 amps. So when you first initially close the switch, um, the rapidly changing um, current creates a back EMF, which when I say a back EMF, I mean a voltage which directly opposes the exact supply voltage. So initially, this would have a voltage through the inductor um, to the left of 9 volts, and then it won't like an instant and then straight after that it will decrease down to zero as a change in current decreases. So find the voltage across the resistor and the voltage across the inductor and therefore calculate the rate of change in current. But so voltage across the resistor, well, that's what we'll start with because we have the resistance, we have the, the, the current and it's quite easily just using Ohm's law. V uh, is equal to IR, just Ohm's law, which is equal to, notice again, three, EC, uh, three significant figures for all the units, so it means all our working and answers need to be in three significant figures. Two, six, zero amps times 12.5 ohms, and that gives us 3.25 volts, 2.25 volts. Right, so we have nine volts running through the battery, so that's, that's, our, that's our supply voltage, and we've got 3.25 volts running through the um, through the resistor, conservation of energy would mean that the uh, the voltage through here should be 5.75, but there's a more formal way to say that um, using Kirchhoff loops. So if we say the sum of the voltage in a circuit is equal to zero, that means the sum of all, all the voltages has to equal zero, and that's that's a formalized statement using Kirchhoff's laws. So if we if we have uh, inductance. Right, the voltage through the inductor is equal to the voltage of the supply, so Vs, minus the voltage of the resistor, which is 9 minus 3.25, which is equal to 5.75, as I said before. So that's a formalized way of calculating and proofing that that is indeed the voltage through the inductor. So find the voltage across the resistor inductor. I've done that. Check. And... Find, therefore calculate the rate of change of current. So if we look at our formula sheet and we look what has an inductance in it, so inductance, inductance, there we go, that has inductance, it has change in, uh, change in current divided by change in time, so that's a rate of change of current and this here, this is our EMF, in other words it's just our voltage um, through the inductor. So if we just quickly write that down, so our Electromotive force, also known as our voltage, is equal to uh, voltage through the inductor minus the inductance times change in current divided by change in time. Ah, uh, that should be I, not T. Change in time. So we have and we have our voltage through the inductor. It's 5.75 volts. Uh, we have our and this negative sign is just to show that the inductor voltage always opposes the supply voltage. And we have an inductance, which is one times 10 to the negative two henrys. Let's move that out of the way. So let's just do some rearranging. E over L, and we'll move the negative side to that side because rate of change doesn't really matter. Um, is equal to 
the rate of change in current divided by change in time, which is thus equal to 5.75 volted uh, volts divided by 1 times 10 to the negative 2 henrys, which equals 575, because it's just divided by 0 0.01 um, amps per second, or you can, you know, ah, let's leave it there, amps per second, amps per second, 575 amps per second, that is the rate of change of current with respect to time. Okay, so we have, can we read that? Let's move that a little higher. A different inductive inductive loop um, is uh, circuit is constructed as shown below. So we have our nine volt power supply uh, resistor. We have a bulb. We have an inductor up here, and the induct notice that the inductor and the bulb are in parallel. So when the switch is closed, the bulb is bright and then gets dimmer. Explain in terms of current why the inductor makes the circuit um, behave this way. So we need to talk about in terms of current. But first, straight off the bat, let's just to sort of recognize what's going on here. This, insist, uh, this resistor is not really going to do much at all. It's just going to suck up a little bit of power. As soon as we flick the, flick the switch, uh, there's going to be rapidly changing current, which is going to thus create a back EMF, um, as we can see from here. Changing current, change time, times inductance is going to give us a large back EMF. And that back EMF initially is going to match the supply. Um, if we take away this resistor, if this resistor wasn't here, it would match the supply. Um, and that would mean all the current would flow through this bulb. So let's let's try and put that into words. So first we'll start off with when the switch, I hope you can read that, smooth that up. When the switch is first closed, there is a large um, change in current. We know that word. We know that delta means change, which induces a back EMF. Yeah, I have to have the word back, but it is. It is. It, it's an EMF that opposes the the original voltage slash current across the inductor. Full stop. This means most of flows through um, the bulb. So we get an induced back EMF which opposes. Um, this means most of the current flows through the bulb. Um, there's large, which is across the inductor. Yeah, so we get a large back EMF. So most of the current slash all the current will be flowing through the bulb. Um, through the bulb, giving max. I'm not by maximum. Max brightness. Power is equal to the current times the voltage. So if we have a large current, voltage is going to say the same regardless. Um, you can't get any more voltage out of, you know, this, these are in parallel, so they'll have the same voltage no matter what, even if this, this originally have the same, and then this will just be like a wire. So after a substantial amount of time, no current will flow through here because this will just be a short circuit and the bulb will go out. Is a change in current decreases more current flows inductor decreasing the brightness of the bulb Um, 
And does that answer the question? Uh, why in terms of current? So I've talked about current, yep, current, current again. The inductor makes the circuit behave this way. Bright then gets dimmer. Most of the current originally is going through the bulb as a change in current decreases, more current flows through the inductor, decreasing the brightness of the bulb. Yep, so that's answered the question. Um, you'll notice that you know, I sort of run out of space. For most of these questions, you'll really need to use the back page. Um, they don't really give enough space to clearly answer it unless you can think very, very clearly. But anyway, last question. Question 3D. Uh, inductive loops, uh, traffic lights can be adjusted to detect bicycle wheels uh, with metal rims. Below is a simplified diagram of a bike waiting at the traffic lights to change. The inductive loop causes uh, uses Faraday's law to detect changes in the inductance when a bicycle is above the circuit. The high frequency alternating current induces a magnetic field in the bicycle room. Magnetic field induced in the bicycle room, bicycle room reduces overall the magnetic field. The inductance of the circuit is then recorded and this is detected by the traffic lights. Explain using physics principles, concepts uh, used in this situation. Ah, explain the underlying physics concepts in this situation. In this answer, you should describe the nature of the magnetic field that is created by the alternating current in the wire. Um, explain why high frequency alternating current is needed to induce a significant magnetic field in the rims of the bicycle wheel and explain why the induced magnetic field in the rims of the bicycle wheel is in the opposite direction to the magnetic field around the wire. So let's first start off with um, the nature of the magnetic field that is created by the alternating current in the wire. So it's going to be an alternating magnetic field. That's pretty straightforward. So the magnetic, magnetic field of the wire is a changing, let's put, eh, changing, I've got M field because I can't be bothered writing the whole word, so I'm running out of time, M field, right, that's a nice, that's, that's, that's on tech, um, high, high frequency alternating currents with AC, it's, is needed to create a large um, change in flux. So I'm just going to use a symbol for flux. It's going to be, oh, I'll just put bracket change in flux. So that's the symbol for, for flux. You know, thy, there we go. That's the symbol for flux, which is equal to magnetic field times an area. So we need a large change of which high frequency needs to create a large change of flux um, through the wheel. Through the wheel um, from from Faraday's law. Change in flux divided by change in time is equal to the EMF or the voltage produced. And I've left out the minus sign because the minus sign is Faraday's contribution to, I mean, a lens's contribution to Faraday's law for the moment. Not so. Thus, a large induced. Uh, hold on. Thus, we've got. Whoops. Thus, with a rapidly changing, let's move this down here, flux. You see that? Rapidly change gives a large. Oh, that should be induces. Hold on. Uh, thus, a large, rapidly changing um, flux gives a large induced. I'm just reading from my notes because I can't do this on the fly as well. I'm just trying to do this quickly. Induced current. Oh, 
I can't write and think at the same time and talk in the wheel right let's just let's just clarify my thoughts so high frequency AC we need high frequency AC to get a large change in flux through the wheel so it needs to be a closed loop as well if it wasn't a close if we put a brake in this wheel you wouldn't have a closed loop in other words in other words to have flux it needs to be through a closed area um, we get a large change of flux because it's a large oscillating magnetic field that's going to generate a large voltage um, through the air circulating in the wheel and it's going to go back and forth back and forth because it's alternating current um, that's going to give us a large current so it's going to get a large induced current flowing in um, the wheel which in turn creates a how do spell that wrong a um, magnetic field because you get, you get if you getting if you get moving charges you're gonna get a magnetic field no matter what um, which opposes the wires magnetic field in field also shorten that um, due to lenses law due lenses law right so that, that answers the question so we have ever getting a large large induced current in the uh, in the in the bicycle wheel um, it thus in turn creates a magnetic field which directly opposes the magnetic field that was used to create it and if it didn't then you just get a runaway effect so it's really it's, it's conservation of energy so I'll just put conservation of energy in here as well conservation of energy but it is it's lenses law conservation of energy energy has to apply to apply yeah, otherwise, if it, if it didn't oppose it, you get a runaway effect and you get free energy for nothing. And that doesn't actually happen. So I think that's yeah, basically. We'll just double check. Explain why the induced magnetic field in the rims of the bicycle wheels is in the opposite direction of the magnetic field wheel, uh, opposite direction to the magnetic field of the wire. Um, it's the opposite. It's opposite due to Lenz's law. And it's, it's also really conservation of energy has to apply. It should be a Y there. Otherwise, yeah. And I think that's about it.